ever get that feeling? You know, like someone would really rather be somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like you're at different parties, but stuck sharing a cheese plate. Totally. That's what we're diving into today. Interesting. Those often missed signs, someone might not actually enjoy spending time with you. Yeah. And let me tell you this article you sent. Mm -hmm. It's a little, uh, it's making me squirm a little. Really? Because I've been on both sides of this, I think. It's true, yeah. It's true. We all have. Okay, so this article, it's interesting how it focuses on those nonverbal giveaways. I, the almost subconscious actions that kind of reveal what someone's really thinking. Yeah, they're trying to be polite. Even when they're trying to be polite. And it jumps right in. Okay. With that thing where you're talking to someone and they're just glued to their phone. Oh, yeah. Like their attention span is a currency. Yeah. And you're getting zero dollars. It's so true. Like it's almost universal now. Okay. It's that lack of presence. Right. Yes. Lack of presence. And then, like, that bleeds into how they're talking to you, too. Yes. You get those short, unenthusiastic replies. Exactly. Too. Like, yeah, sure, fine. Whew. So hard to have a conversation. It's like pulling teeth. The difference between a lively exchange and a one-sided interrogation. Mm -hmm. And this article really stresses how crucial that genuine engagement is for connection. Yeah. Like, asking questions, adding your own thoughts. Yeah. You know, actively keeping that conversation going. Yes. Oh, my God. Otherwise, it's just like hitting a tennis ball against a wall. Yes. It's the worst. And speaking of feeling invisible in a conversation. Oh, yeah. Another big red flag. When they just never ask you anything about yourself. It's so true. Yeah. Because if you think about it, when you're genuinely interested in someone, you're naturally curious. Right? Oh, really? You want to know what they're thinking, mm. what they've experienced, you know, what makes them tick. Yeah. And it's like they just see a conversation as all about them. Right. Which kind of makes me think about this. Have you ever been with someone who's constantly checking the time? Oh, yeah. I mean, I get it. Sometimes yeah. you have to be somewhere. Right. But when it's like every five seconds. Right, right. It's like they've got one foot out the door. Exactly. It reveals where their mind truly is at that moment. And yeah. it's not on you or the conversation. It's brutal. Okay, so the article doesn't stop there. Oh, no. It talks about body language. Okay. Those closed off postures, arms crossed. Yeah, yeah. Leaning away. Like they're trying to create some kind of physical barrier between you. Like their body is sending an SOS signal. Yeah. Help, I need an escape route. Totally. This interaction is slowly draining my will to live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for a punch to the ego? No, oh, I don't know. Hit me. <laughs> this one is especially for those of us who pride ourselves on our sense of humor mm -hmm. when someone consistently does not laugh at your jokes. Ouch. Yeah, that one stings a bit. But you're so right. Yeah. Because humor can be such a powerful tool for connection. Right. And when you don't have that shared laughter, it can definitely be a sign that something's off. Yes. And, you know, it, it's not just about, you know, chuckling at jokes. The article also emphasizes the importance of actively contributing to the conversation. And this is where it gets interesting. Okay. This article, it goes beyond just those little signs. Right. It talks about how this lack of give and take in a conversation can actually reveal something a little deeper. Yeah. It can be a sign of like a self-centered approach to interacting, almost like conversational narcissism. Oh, wow. Yeah, like conversational narcissism. So they're not really interested in sharing the stage. They just want an audience. Oh, interesting. Okay. Exactly. Wow. And that makes me think about those people. What's that? You know those people who are escape artists? Yeah. Masters yeah. of the Irish Goodbye always have an excuse for why they have to leave early. Right. And, I mean, I get it. Things come up. But when it's like every single time. Right. Every time. Yeah. Okay. A pattern. It's like they had one foot out the door the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. And it could feel like, okay, so th their actions are speaking louder than their words in that case. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, it's like, what happens after the conversation or the attempted conversation? Oh, you're talking about the lack of follow-up. Yeah, the lack of follow-up. Because you think you had this great time. Right. And then they just disappear. Ghost town. It's like you've entered the ghosting zone. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like if it was just a brief interaction, sure. <laughs> or like purely circumstantial. Right. But if you felt like it was meaningful and then there's that silence afterwards. Yes. Yeah, that says a lot. This article really emphasizes that people who actually value your presence in their life will make an effort to stay connected. Yes. Reach out, initiate plans, you know. Yes. And speaking of actions, speaking louder than words. Okay. Have you ever noticed how deflating it is when you share something you're really excited about? Yeah. And the other person just could not care less. 
like you're bubbling over with excitement. Yeah. And they're just like, nah. The article actually calls that out. A lack of shared enthusiasm. Yes. It's subtle. Yes. But it's such a powerful indicator that something's off, I think. Yes. You know, because when you're really engaged with someone, you're invested in their world too, yes. right? You're celebrating their wins. You're empathizing with their struggles. Yeah, exactly. But that lack of emotional reciprocity. Yes. Yeah, that can be a red flag. It's like they're emotionally checked out. They're just there but not really there. Right, you're just going through the motions. And you know, while we're on the topic of feeling invisible, let's talk about this. Okay. This is something I think a lot of people experience, constantly being the one to initiate contact. Yes, oh my gosh, yes. It's a two-way street, right? It is a two-way street. Relationships have to be a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And when you're always the one putting in the effort to reach out, making the plans. Exhausting. It is, it is. And it can feel so one-sided after a while. Yeah. yeah. Like healthy connection. Yeah. It involves both people actively nurturing that relationship. It's like they'd be perfectly content to never see you again. Right, right. Unless yeah. you did all the work. Exactly. The worst. Okay, oh. so then there are those times when someone's physically there. Yeah. But mentally, they are miles away. Oh, 100%. They might be nodding along but you can tell they're not really present. Right. Not really listening. It's like you're having a conversation with a zombie. Yes. They're only yeah. half there. The article called this, um, what was it? Oh yeah, seeming distracted. Yes. And it's so common, especially now, right? Right. With you know everything that's going on, all the distractions, but it's so frustrating to feel like you're not really being heard or seen. It's like talking to a brick wall, but the brick wall has mastered the art of nodding politely. Exactly. And sometimes it's not even that they're totally checked out. Right. It's that you just can never seem to get past like yes. the small talk. The surface level, yeah. It's like you're stuck in small talk land. It's like there's a wall yes. preventing you from going deeper. Yes. And that can be a sign that they're just not interested in building that kind of connection with you. Interesting. Which actually leads into the last point in this article. Okay. That gut feeling Ooh. that something's just off. Yeah. You get that like almost like you're walking on eggshells. Like you huh. never know what to say or do. Right. You're not comfortable. It's that feeling of not being able to relax. Yes. To truly be yourself. Yes. And you know, when you're genuinely comfortable with someone, the conversation just flows. Yes. You feel safe to be vulnerable, to share, you know, to be yourself. Totally. But when that's missing, it's worth paying attention to. Yeah, it's like our intuition is like waving a giant red flag. Exactly. This has been this has been a wild ride. It has. We've covered so much. We have. It's almost overwhelming how many little signs there are. Right. That someone might not be as into it as you are. Right. Exactly. It's not about becoming like hyper vigilant or anything like that. Right. You know, like over analyzing every interaction. Yeah. It's just about awareness. Yes. You know, being aware of your own responses to these things. Yes, that's such a good point because you don't need to click with everyone. Exactly. And that's okay. It's totally fine. But, you know, recognizing those signs can mm. help you prioritize the relationships where it is a two-way street. Yes, where both people feel seen, heard, valued. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. This has been so fascinating. Any, like, final thoughts before we wrap up this deep dive? I think just remember that, you know, sometimes the most valuable connection you can have is with yourself. Ooh. Knowing your worth. Yes. Knowing what you bring to the table. So well said. Yeah. Until next time, keep those conversations flowing. Keep those connections strong. Yes. And remember, you are awesome.